All right, I am back. I'm doing a couple of videos today. This one is on lettuce, so uh, home aquaponics, lettuce. Um, you know, lettuce is one of the biggest challenges with indoor growing. Um, unless you got a lot of light and you're willing to pay that kind of money for a lot of light. Um, and yes, these are all way too close together, but that's kind of my style. Um, one of the main things, and I'm going to keep this video very short, is that lettuce... Lettuce really needs a dark time. It needs a time where it has a lot of darkness and then also a higher amount of light when the light is actually out. You know, versus over here, you know, the chard, the kale stuff, that just, I never turn that off. It's 24 hours. They they do even pretty good under lower setting of light. It's, it's actually kind of weird why plants that would have so much cellular structure, why they would do so much better under lesser light versus the uh, plants over here that are, you know, under, you know, almost more light, but, you know, it's just hard to say. I think the thing with the lettuce is, too, is that, you know, this is not the best system. This is a tray system. I've got the cups just sitting on it, as opposed to over here, I've got them in there sitting in them, and they, you know, get a lot more oxygen. There's a lot more water flow going on over here, and I'm sorry, I'll move this as steady as I can. I'm going to but, you know, you would think, oh, well, there's lots of oxygen, you know, look how much water is going through there, but not really. I mean, it's slowly through the flow tra ta table going through it, and it's not as much oxygen, <laughs> sorry, I'm so tongue-tied, it is not as much oxygen as you would think. And it's really led me to believe that even the flow trays are not the best method, um, you know, especially the flood and drains, because ideally you want the oxygen, that's what the hydroponics thrives off of, and to just do a flood and drain where the water comes up for a few seconds and then falls back down, well, you're essentially glorified watering your plants. So at that point with a flood and drain, you're really just kind of being a lazy man and once or twice a day you're having it water your plants versus you watering them. And, and that's good to some extent, but I'm just saying that it is nothing like the PVC where you have a little rushing water creek going through. I mean, the roots are so thick in that PVC that it's starting to clog up the PVC, and, and the lettuce has just kind of taken its time. And they are really close together. I'm about to plant some more that aren't so close together. I am well aware of that, but, um, you know, also one thing I've found is that a lot of those hardware store varieties of lettuce are not that good. Like, um, I'm even wondering uh, lately if I'm going to be ordering my seeds from you know, a better place, uh, maybe an actual farm that, you know, sells what they sell, because you'll find that the hardware stores, they give you these, like, you know, it'll say on there, um, you know, not organic, but, you know, uh, heirloom or whatever. Well, there are these varieties that really don't produce much. They're, you know, and I've had multiple, peop multiple people say this, that the, the hardware store varieties are kind of a scam, you know. And what they are is they're getting everybody into the idea of having that summer garden, that little Victorian garden, and they want everybody to have a head of lettuce that they can say they grew, but that head of lettuce is not the head of lettuce from the store. And, you know, you might find me dead the next day telling you this or something, but no, the, the thing is, is like all these, believe it or not where I got these was the, uh, my mom bought that silly four patriots deal where you buy the seed canister for if it's the end of the world and I ran out of lettuce seeds and so I opened up that canister because I knew we weren't going to use it and I knew even if it went that long it wasn't going to last and and this is what you got you know and I'll tell you that we even grew some of this outside and even though the lettuce did a little better outside it got more light the leaves were a little more broad it was still a very weak lettuce strain. I mean, it it just it, it's so different than when you see that you know butter crunch or some of those nice big heads of lettuce that you see at the store. You know, Paris White was one I had real success with before. You know, these lettuce they're like for you know, I don't know they're they're an older like probably an heirloom variety or something. But you know, if you're a professional or you want to really get something out of your lettuce. I highly suggest that you get your seed from a better place than the Lowe's hardware or whatever. So, I mean, it, it sounds great to have an heirloom variety, but at the end of the day, if you're paying for all this electricity and, you know, you're paying for the things it takes to grow it, 
the the reality is is that that heirloom variety is not going to be worth your while. Now it is nice, and you're going to get a maybe a better flavor than some of the other lettuces. Like, you know, yeah, if I made a salad with this, it might taste better. It might taste a little more delicate, or you know. But reality is, this ain't going to pay the bills, and I'm not asking it to pay the bills. But I will say that with my next planting of lettuce, which I'm about to do very soon. I will not be using these varieties at all. And, uh, you know, so, I mean, my mom, she claims, oh, well, they're just, you know, they're a lot better, they taste better, but no, they're just not, you know, and, and I've seen it before, you know, I've seen a lot of hydro guys that are doing these uh, lettuces, and you'll see them, like, at the hydro store, guys got lettuce in the hydro tank, and it's just, like I said, everything's under curled, and it's just these littler funny leaves. I mean, it's just not what you're seeing at the grocery store. And it is a different variety, but, you know, if you're going to do it, you're going to want the highest producing. I mean, that's just no brainer, you know, unless you actually have a niche for yourself or some, you know, five-star restaurant really wants your little special head of lettuce or something, which some people, that's what they do. They provide, you know, lettuce that you can't get at the grocery store. But I will say that this lettuce is not necessarily the best and so I hate to say that to it because I want to be appreciative and stuff but you know I just know that I've grown lettuce in the past of other varieties that have been far more successful and and, uh, and I would wonder what they would do over here in the in the PVC too and maybe just see what the difference is in a float tray and another thing is, is I'm not using fish over here what I do is I take the fish water it's very low right now but something to think about too is keeping your reservoir low because otherwise <clears throat> you have to change the water so you know that you don't want to keep a full reservoir because that water is stale in uh, you know less than a couple weeks anyway so you know might as well just keep your water as low as it can be and then just you know let it drink it up and then put in new water so that's that's kind of a good little method there but you know, and, and I hate to say it, I mean, I, I, like I said, I steer away from the chemicals, and even this stuff, you know, here it is, look at this, General Organics, well, guess what, in the back of that bottle, it says, not organic in the state of California, I mean, what the hell, you know, I mean, it just, there are just certain things, you know, and I have tremendously gotten rid of my chemical supplies, and I'm down to very, very common, you know, seaweeds and things like that, but um, you know, so I'm not doing anything wrong, you know, I'm, I'm really, this lettuce, they're nourished, they're getting the light they need, they're getting the water they need, they're not getting overwatered. you know, they are a little close together, but I can just say that it's not the variety, but the main purpose of this video, and I'm going to end it right now, but uh, the main purpose is, is that lettuce needs a dark time, it needs a really large dark time, um, you know, people think that lettuce goes bad in the summer because it gets so hot, that's a misconception. It is slightly from the heat due to wilt, but one of the main problems is, is during the middle of the summer is when the sun becomes at its longer period and thus the light does not do as well, or the lettuce does not do as well because it needs more dark. It, you know, lettuce is a spring and a fall crop because the light has also gone down. So, you know, it is not necessarily that it's not a summer crop. It's that it is not a crop that can have full sun all the time. So, anyway, that's my take anyway. I mean, you can say I'm wrong or anything, but um, I started putting these on a timer because I figured this out. And, I mean, it was like instantly the plant started growing right. And, and full 24-hour, 24-7, it just does not work with lettuce at all. So, and uh, part of the problem here, too, is I advanced up to some LED tubes, but I was only using T12s. And T12s really are not enough. They're just not enough. It's, you know, if you got some philodendrons in the corner of your house and you got some T12s on them, that's, that's about the only thing T12s are good for. And I did find these. I don't want to show you too much of the light. Um, you know, they look like regular bulbs, but, you know, basically they're an LED replacement for T12s, which... I guess since I'm on the side of the room here, I might as well mention them that for uh, they are kind of expensive. They're like $18 a piece, but they should last a long time, and the, uh, they're nearly as good as T5s, if not almost a little better because of the spectrum that you're getting uh, as being a little better than the T5s even. Um, so anyway, yeah, the you know enough light, but then the question is, 
you know, is the product worth the light? You know, are you going to pay $40, $50 for light a month and hardly even get your lettuce yield? You know, are you still going to the store and buying your, your lettuce, you know? So, you know, like I said, if it's fun, it's for a hobby, you want to improve, but, you know, go get yourself some good strains of lettuce, high grade, uh, you know, basically grocery store grade, professional grade lettuce seed. Go find it on the internet, go, go to the real garden store, talk to the guy about it, and, uh, just don't buy into any of that. And I'm going to even bark on Seeds of Change. I mean, Seeds of Change, organic, they're supposed to be this great company, and honestly, their varieties lack. And, uh, you know, there's even one, I can't quite remember their uh, name, but they're right out of Missouri here, too. And and his seeds are bad, you know. I mean, he, they're, you know, he's claiming he's collecting all these great heirloom varieties and stuff, but they're fairly weak genetics, you know. And, and so if... You know, if I was a Victorian gardener and I had all kinds of money, I would grow some, you know, different varieties of lettuce. But right now, this tray is all I got, and uh, and I'm going to grow what's best in this tray. So, yeah, this is the last you're going to see of the little foofy varieties that, you know, are essentially a spinach almost or something. But anyway, oh yeah, Baker Creek. And, you know, I don't want to diss Baker Creek, but just like seeds of change, you know, heirloom varieties, organic varieties, and reality is they're, they're really just not that good, you know. It's not that you're getting a GMO variety, you know, it's, it's not that you want to get GMO varieties, you know, you want to grow organic food with no pesticide content, you want to, you know, you want to have it have organic nutrients, but that doesn't mean, you know, an organic or heirloom seed sometimes you know, like I said, is it worth your while, though? That's the problem. And you're not, you're not, you're not going to get cancer from using a non-heirloom organic seed, you know, especially one that you didn't put any pesticides and you used all organic ingredients to grow. There's nothing in that plant that's going to manipulate you or change your genes or anything like that. So, But, yes, I am against GMO for the most part. And I am... I'm actually, you know, I've never, ever used glycophosphates on any of this or anything like that. So, anyway, that's it. Let us, a uh, little video on that. Thanks, bye.